on Tuesday, March 30, 2021, Mr. Robert Fowler, 50 years old, mechanic of a Portmore address and employed to Bowler's Motoring World, was charged with the murder of Canis Jackson, accounts clerk of a St. Catherine address and formerly employed to Polyfoods Limited located in Crossroads. The circumstances which led to the arrest and charge of Robert Fowler is that on Wednesday, the 24th of March, 2021, Miss Canis Jackson, aged 20 years old, left her residence in Portmore, St. Catherine, at 7 a.m. for work. She did not turn up for work, and efforts to contact her were unsuccessful. A report was made to the police, that's the Cayman as police, at 8 p.m. that same day. As a result of the report, investigation into a missing person commenced and the appropriate protocol were established. On Friday, the 26th of March, 2021, the body of a female was discovered at the whole fishing village in Portmore, St. Catherine, that is in the vicinity of the Dyke Road. The body was later identified as Canis Jackson, who was reported missing. Investigation led the police to crossroads where Mr. Fowler was taken into custody. After further investigation and interview, the police was able to recover a number of physical items, including an, a handbag suspected to be that of Miss Jackson, as well as a banking card and other physical evidence. The accused also gave a caution statement that was recorded in the presence of his attorney. It is to be noted that based on investigation, the victim was killed between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. in the morning that she left for work. After the post-mortem result, it will be determined if additional charges will be preferred against the accused. I want to point out at this time that during the investigation, the accused actually took the officers to a number of locations, including a location somewhere in Portmore, where he indicated that he tried to dispose of the body of the victim, but for some reason, he actually removed it from that location and took the body to the location where she was discovered. She also, he also took the police to an address in Crossroads where he claimed that certain items of clothing were disposed of. When the police went and searched, it was not discovered, it was not discovered as we believe that it could have been taken by the garbage collectors. Um, investigation continues. I also want to point out that a piece of garment, a shamai to be specific, was also discovered, which is very critical to the investigation. He will appear before the court on the 9th of April, 2021, where he will answer to the charge. DCP, can you clarify when you visited his home, were there items that were identified there as well? Her, hand, her handbag, mm -hmm. a bank card, and other physical doc, um, um, evidence, which I don't want to get into, were actually identified at her home. And I also want to point out that when the initial report was made, we were told that the person that she might have had contact with was Robert Fowler, who used to take her periodically to work whenever he drives a, a, a motor car. Um, in addition, I want to clarify, based on our investigation, 
that there was no intimate relationship between the two parties. Um, our understanding that it was just a platonic, pure platonic relationship that existed. On the morning of her death, our investigation also revealed that Mr. Fowler had actually lured her to his home under the guise that he had forgotten to take a piece of um, equipment that was relevant to his trade as a mechanic, as a mechanic rather. And that's how she ended up being at his home in Portmore. So in the caution statement, was there evidence of motive established? Well, all we, based on what we were told, that there was a, an argument, a dispute, and he got upset, and she was strangled. That's the, the way she he actually strangled her. He used a piece of rope. And um, just to say that, without giving away too much, that a similar piece of rope was actually found at his house. And he admitted that, yes, the, 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 the victim was strangled, albeit he may have given a little a different account as to where the incident happened. Um, but we believe, based on our investigation, that it happened at his home. And the body remained there until he returned from work. He disposed of the body in, in, a, in a Nissan caravan that he actually drove. In relation to the quality of the investigation and the prospect of more charges, when are we likely to hear of whether or not more charges are to come? As soon as the post-mortem result is received, that will determine, you know, in terms of whether additional charges will be preferred. Um, as, we, as I can say without any conclusive evidence, we suspect that she was assaulted. Um, you know, by the accused, sexually assaulted, sexually assaulted by the accused. Um, we are also looking at, you know, the whole issue of this phone will be interrogated to see what we can get from that phone to support our investigation. And we believe that we will get critical information and coordinates to assist us. And I, I, I must commend the officers for the swiftness in terms of bringing the matter to a conclusion. I know that they spent several hours, despite the view that is held. Um, I think the officers responded well to have brought us to the conclusion that we receive. And I will say that we will ensure that an airtight case is presented with a level of dispatch and urgency. This is one case, the outstanding material will be supplied within short order. We are paying special attention to this one and we have to, whatever we need to fast track, will be fast track so that justice can be served. We believe that our women must be protected and as a law enforcement body, we will have to do what is necessary to send the right signal and we have no doubt that the criminal justice system will also send the right signal that we do not tolerate assault on women as a, a, and as a matter of fact, assault on anyone. And when we brutally murder our people, the law must send the right message and the system must send the right message. Finally then, from there are people who are concerned about you know whether or not they are safe given the level of violence in the society while it is difficult to police these kinds of incidents you know what are we doing to to to, to make people more safe or how can we engage the community and help keep people safe i i commonly say that violence and crime in generally is not really a police problem, it's a societal problem. And whilst the police can have our own plans and strategy to cauterize the violence, 
it requires the entire society, a joined up approach. We can have high visibility, we can use our intelligence in the appropriate and efficient way, and we are getting better at those. The result is very clear in terms of the quick su succession or the quick, quick way in which we bring pe perpetrators to justice. The amount of cases that are being solved and the result, the attendant result in terms of guilty pleas that we are getting, I think it is unprecedented. And for us to get that level of guilty plea, it is suggesting that the quality of investigation has improved, which actually puts the, the accused in a, in a position that they have no option but to seek the mercy of the courts. And so we can do that. We can do all that we can, but until society recognizes that violence has become a culture and we have to put measure in terms of looking at the way we bring up our children. That is very critical in terms of our way forward, uh, uh, the way we focus on our boys. The, 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 we give them that. There need to be a culture change in terms of all of us, including social entity or NGOs, government entities, the church, the, 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 the civic organization, recognizing that all of us do have a role to play in this process. We need also to culture our men for them to understand that women are not their property and we do not have a claim of right to a woman and um, we need to desist from believing that. And I think also it's going to be a process of education and we have to start the conversation. We can't, we can't police our way out of this. I believe we have to have that join-up approach to treat with this issue of violence. And violence is not about violence against women. It's a violence about every, against everyone, including children, including our young men. When we look at the data, the data is suggesting that between 2011 and 2020, we have had an average of, I think, 156 women being killed annually, the highest being 160, which was in 2017, and the lowest was, I think, 100 in 2014. When we look at the same data for men, we have an average of over 1,200 annually, the highest being 1,400 plus, and that was 2017. Um, for 2020, we had one on one thousand, just just over one thousand two hundred. So we have a culture, and if we drill down into the data, we will see also violence against young people, and that is something that we are looking at as well. So the the, the point I'm trying to raise is that violence is a problem. It's against everybody, female, women, and the, it's too high. We need to change that culture of violence. Um, we are looking, if we look at the data in terms of the interpersonal violence, the, 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 the violence in relation to um, family, etc., that's very high. And we have to teach our people how to resolve issues without getting into violence. It's, it's really a significant task. I said it before, we have to engage in a program that looks at the issue of values and attitude. How do we change that? How do we cause our men to be a little more... It's, it's about valuing yourself. I think it, it, it boils down to self-value. What value do we put on ourselves as men? Because most of the perpetrators are, in fact, men. So until a man can get to that place where he values himself and values relationship, we are going to continue to see this level of violence.